Welcome back to Dark Souls Clan. We are going to continue on with the swamp. This will be a pretty beefy episode, but we will smash this out. So where we left off, we were going to get a new covenant as well as a new gesture. We're going to get the legion etiquette by praying to him and then ask to join the covenant. And we'll also get the trophy related to that. After we get the covenant trophy and the gesture, you want to open up your equipment tab, go to your covenants equipment slot and equip the new watchdogs of Farron. Now, while you go through the game, you can have it equipped so you can earn some of those covenant items, the blood sword grass that it drops, or you can just wait until we farm it at the end of the game. Okay. We're going to go around outside the perimeter from where the bonfire entrance was. And right here is going to be an illusionary wall. You then just want to grab the ashes up ahead and then you can drop back down into the covenant room. Okay, next thing we're going to do is head back to the shrine and give the ash that we just picked up to the handmaid. You can tell her where you found the ash, so the first option. Okay, and after you give her the ash, you then want to uh, press options and then quit the game. This is so the area can refresh. And after you give her the ashes, it's going to trigger the next part of the quest for Cirrus. So go ahead and speak with her on the stairs. Now she's going to give us another gesture. We're going to get the dark moon loyalty. After that, make our way back over to the bonfire. You can burn the undead bone shard that you should have to upgrade the flask. After that, we're going to go over to Rosaria's bed chamber. There's a bit of things we can do here as well. So once you arrive, you just want to go forward. We can finally speak to her. She has the antidote for COVID. You guys are allowed to finally talk to her. You have to stand back to actually speak to her, but ask to join the covenant and you're going to get a trophy. Okay. So after you join the covenant, you're going to offer one pale tongue, only offer one at this point. Okay, after we offer one, we can then leave. Now you want to go to the back of the room and you'll find the NPC from the shrine that we spoke to to actually do this quest line. Go ahead and speak to him. Go through all of his dialogue. After he's just repeating himself, then you just want to press options and then quit the game like usual to refresh the area. When you reload the game, he should no longer be here. So make sure he has disappeared. And then if he has, you can go to the bonfire and we can travel back to the old wolf of Farron bonfire. Now, since I have that equipped, um, randomly as I'm playing, you'll see that I'm invading another world. So a pop-up will come up and then you'll invade another world. And upon killing the host, you will be rewarded the covenant item. Now, again, you don't have to do this, especially if you don't have online access. Farming them isn't too bad offline, to be completely honest, um, especially with the setup that we have. So it's completely up to you if you want to farm them online by doing that or by farming them from NPCs, which I'll show you at the end of the guide. After that, we can make our way up the lift. OK, once we're up the lift, make your way around the right side and up the stairs. There's going to be a stray demon at the end of the bridge. The way to actually damage him is by weakening him on his legs. So if you attack his legs, he'll kind of crumble apart and he'll be much easier. So again, just keep attacking his legs. You can use magic as well if you have, you know, decent magic, but ultimately just keep attacking his legs and you will eventually kill him. And he's not too bad to dodge as well. A lot of his attacks, if you're hugging him, you can dodge them. Upon killing him, you'll get a soul of a stray demon. After that, we can then make our way from the stray demon back towards where we came from. But instead of going back down the stairs, we're going to go to the very end over here. And on the right side is a broken hole in the wall. That'll allow you to drop down. And then you just hug the wall and keep making your way across. And then once you come into this area, you're going to find a spell up ahead near the dead dragon. You can also kill the Titanite Lizard if you want, and then grab the spell right in front of the dead dragon. You're going to get the Lightning Spear Miracle. Now from here, we're just going to turn around. You're going to see a pathway up on the right. Just make your way up here on the right side. 
and then go up the stairways. There's going to be some enemies here, but you can just, you know, take them out. They're just grunts. And then once you get to the top, you can then drop down. Make sure you drop down on the ledges or you'll die from fall damage. And then you can just drop down and then drop down again and go back down the lift. After that, we'll use the bonfire to come back to the swamp. So we're at the fair and keep. This time we're going to go to the left. We're going to finish up the swamp finally so we don't have to come back to this bullshit place ever again. Make your way on this left side here on this island. Now keep making your way forward. You'll find the islands here that you can use and then you're going to find the staircase to go up. Now this time through the swamp we're going to be extinguishing the flame so it'll open the doorway to the boss and to a new area basically. So again, you have to kill the enemies in the area, extinguish the flame. You'll have a cutscene for each one. After you extinguish the first flame, we can come down this way. There's actually three flames throughout this area. The next one is basically just straight ahead. So you just go left and then just go straight. You can just follow the little islands that keep you out of the poison, make your way up the staircase here and kill any enemies that you see. And it'll be roughly in the same spot, it's basically the same layout, and then just go extinguish the flame. So that'll be two out of three. Now after that cutscene for that one, you can run around here to the left side. And you can either run past the enemies or kill them. Bye, bitch. And then we can go rest at the bonfire and travel to the old Wolf of Farron bonfire. So travel to this one and then we'll make our way outside the doorway, go down the ladder. So slide all the way down, just avoid the slugs once you get down there, you just want to start spam rolling basically. Go to the left side here and you can actually find a covenant item. So that's one of those ones we get from either doing the online for PVP or that we farm later. So that's one less that you'll have to farm. After that. Go back to where the ladder is and then you can see the tower with the slugs. We're going to use a homeward bone so go ahead and rest at the bonfire up ahead. You can see we have two out of three flames here. I'm going to use this as sort of a reference point for you guys. So we've got two out of three and in order to get to the third one, we're going to hug this wall over here because there's a few items we want to pick up on the way. And just keep hugging the wall. This way you can follow along easy because a lot of the swamp can look the same because it's all shit. Now keep going forward. Watch out for these frogs because if they completely blight you, then you'll just die immediately. So yeah, avoid that. Keep hugging the wall. You'll eventually find this cave. There's going to be an item in here. You do not want to be trapped between all of them. So quickly grab the golden scroll. This is another scroll that we can bring to Orbeck, the sorcerer at the Firelink Shrine. Leave the cave and then still hugging the wall, we're going to go around the left side. Keep wrapping around, keep going. And next we're going to be going towards the extinguished flame. So if you keep going straight, you're going to see there's some items up there that we'll get a bit later. But keep going straight up the stairs. And this is where we can extinguish our last flame to open the doorway. And again, there may be enemies, but just quickly take them out. Okay, so after this, we're going to extinguish the flame. This will be the last one to open the door. And again, you wanted to rest at that bonfire because we're going to use a homeward bone. Now go in your inventory, use the homeward bone and rest at the last one you rested at. And if you didn't go to that one, just go ahead and head to it now. So from this fair and keep bonfire, we'll just head straight and you can see the door in front of us. So the door will now be open since we've extinguished all the flames. We're going to go into a new area. Now this isn't the boss just yet, but it is a new area that we can grab a few more items. And on top of getting those items, there is another bonfire there as well. So we can basically have another checkpoint right before the boss. Now you're just going to make your way through this area here. You can take the left path to avoid a lot of things and just run straight past enemies like this, for example, and then you can just drop down. Keep heading down the path. It's pretty linear regardless, so it doesn't really matter what path you go down as long as you come past this area with the two dark wraiths. Ignore them for now. Just try and roll away. Go to your right. You're going to come into this archway. 
and you'll see a bonfire up in the distance. So we'll grab this bonfire. If they're chasing you, you should be able to reset it in time. And then we're going to keep heading down this way. This is because we're going to grab some items that are in the area. And you have to kill a few of these grunts, nothing too crazy. Now, after you do kill them, you can come over here past this crystal lizard. And then you're just going to want to grab the spell Great Magic Weapon. That's going to be for one of the sorcery trophies. So just make sure you quickly grab that. Then run back to the bonfire. Again, you'll kill these enemies if you reset it. If you ran back, you shouldn't need to. But this time you're going to drop down. And you'll see we're in the swamp area. But up here you can also grab the Atonement spell. After we grab the Atonement, you can also get a Hollow Gem here if you happen to not have one. Again, we'll need those for the trophy at the end, but I will show you where to grab them. Now, if you want to know how you head back, you just hug the wall to the left again, and then you can just zoom your way on over. And you can use the bonfire to go back to the shrine. So get to your closest bonfire, head back to the Firelink Shrine, and I'll explain this part the best I can, so please follow along. Okay, so from the bonfire going left, you're going to come over here and you're going to find Yule of Londor. And what you want to do is hit talk. You want to talk through his dialogue for our next gesture. That's going to get you the Reckon gesture, so we should have 16 out of 26. And now the next part, how we're going to do this is we want to choose the Draw Out True Strength option. This is for another quest line, so you have to make sure you do it as I explain it. Now what that option does is it basically gives you a free level and you eventually become cursed. So whatever levels you still need, if you're following my build, you can just put it towards that. And as you can see, he doesn't have that option anymore, but we do have to do this five times. So if you look in your inventory, you're going to find in the key items that there is a dark sigil. So you can see that we have one. We need to have five of these. So in order to do that, we have to do this four more times. And how you do this is you run up the stairs to the top of the Firelink Shrine and you just drop off from way high up in the air and kill yourself. And then after you've done that, pick up your souls again if you have a lot so you don't lose them. You're going to kill yourself a second time. Now, after you've killed yourself twice, and again, you can pick up your souls in between so you don't lose them if you, you know, have an abundance of souls. So again, we killed ourselves twice. I'm just coming back up here to grab my souls. So you only want to die twice. As you can see, I died twice. We picked up the souls. And then we're going to run back down here and go back to Yol of Londor. You want to be careful doing that too because I accidentally hit him and you don't want an aggressive NPC in a Dark Souls game. Trust me. Now you can see he has the draw out true strength option again. And we can do that for a second time. And then you just rinse and repeat that option until you have five dark sigils. So we've done it twice. You can now see that we have two of them. And again, you kill yourself twice in between that those um, times. And then you go back to him and he allows you to draw out true strength again. After you've done that five times, you then need to close the game completely. And then when you reopen it, you're going to see that he's died. Now you're going to see a new NPC here named Yuria. Now Yuria gives us our 17th gesture, which is the dignified bow. Go ahead and hit purchase item and buy the tome that she sells for 50 souls. You don't have to worry about the rings at this point in time. You can buy them if you need to, or if your friend dr dropped the rings to you, you don't need them anyways. But again, don't worry about them at the moment, but you do want to buy that tome and you don't want to give that tome to Irina. You want to save it until we unlock Carla, which is later on in the guide. And I'll make sure that I tell you when that happens. After that, you can do, you know, an upgrade of your weapon if you haven't upgraded it in some time. But what we must do is come over here to Orbeck and you want to give him all of the sorcery scrolls that you have currently. Now, the reason you want to give him all of them is because if you didn't give him any and we killed the next boss, he actually leaves the shrine and he never comes back. And that's how these become missable trophies. So please, before you kill the next boss, give him all the scrolls and then exhaust his dialogue to make sure his quest is progressed. And then we can head back to this bonfire. Now, for this next part, you are going to need to be embered. So from here, you'll see the doorway up ahead, but we want to go to the tower right here by the slugs. You're going to see a summon sign for Yellowfinger. Go ahead and summon him. Now, once he spawns in, he's going to give you our next gesture.
You also want to use the black separation crystal to kick them out of the world. So he's going to give us the proper bow gesture, and then you can use the black separation crystal to send him home. Next, you want to go back to the bonfire and go to the bonfire that's fair and keep perimeter. And there's going to be Londor Pale Shade right next to this bonfire. Again, while you're embered, make sure you summon him. And once he spawns into the world, he's going to give us another gesture. Now, lastly, you do have to be embered for any kind of summons like this. So again, please make sure you're embered. If for some reason you don't have any embers, you can buy them from some of the NPCs in the Firelink Shrine, or you can try farming for them. Now, as I'm playing, I am still invading worlds and I'm getting those sword grass. Just a reminder if you are playing online, but if you're not, that's fine. We'll just continue from this bonfire. We're gonna go back outside these archways. And then we're gonna go over here. Now I have cleared out the enemies, they're not hard but uh, it's just a bit easier to show you where to go. So on this main path here where all these kind of torches are and these swords, if you go up this first lot of stairs, you're gonna find another sign. So once again, you need to be embered. You're gonna summon Black Hand. So you should have used your Black Separation Crystal to dismiss the Londor Shade. And then now we're gonna get yet another gesture here. So this should be our 20th gesture. So we're, we're slamming through these guys like you're a fucking beast. All right, he's going to give you the buy my sword gesture. After that, we can make our way up towards this boss door. You can grab the cracked red eye orb. Um, I've got a poison gem as well from the enemies. That's who kind of drop it. But again, we'll make our way inside and we will take on our next boss. Now, thankfully, this boss isn't too hard and you do have the phantom here to help you out. You guys can just kind of work off of each other whenever the boss has aggro on the NPC. You can focus that big dick damage and get him down. Now, while you're fighting him in his first phase, he does have two phases. But when you're fighting him in his first phase, there will be multiple that also spawn. So there'll be more than one of himself. They will sometimes hit each other as well. So sometimes you can use that to your advantage. But when multiple start spawning in, you do want to make sure that you don't have any coming up from behind you like the NPC did there. And he just got absolutely fucking murdered. So again, just be really mindful of the battlefield. Other than that, it's really easy. Upon entering his second phase, he's going to go fucking Kaioken or some shit. And he's got a fire sword now. And he just he does basically the same attacks aside from, you know, a leap attack to close in on you as well as a dash attack. Um, other than that, it's pretty much the same attacks. Whenever he does those really long drawn out attacks, that's when you kind of have some vulnerability and you can, you know, start doing some damage again. Eventually, you and the Phantom will take him out and you'll get another trophy. Okay, so after you kill him, you can then trigger his bonfire or light his bonfire. And we're going to head back to the Firelink Shrine so we can get a ring. So make sure you light that, head to the shrine, and what you want to do is exit the game right when you're there. So reload the game once you make it to Firelink Shrine, and then when you reload, you should see Hawkwood over here in the corner again. Go and have a chat to this guy right here, go through all of his dialogue, and you should get another ring. So that's the Farron ring added to our ring collection. After that, keep going through his dialogue, make sure you spoke to him until he's repeating go back to the bonfire and then from here we can travel back to the abyss watchers bonfire that we just unlocked move forward to the crypt that's going to cause it to move and then you will find a staircase now the next area is the catacombs it's not too bad with some guidance so welcome to the catacombs of karth ass and i'm going to be your guide so immediately from here we can just make our way to the left there's going to be a bridge. There are some uh, skeletons that sort of animate as you go over them. So just be aware of them. There's an enemy at the end of this bridge as well that I've killed. But from here, you just want to jump off the bridge and land onto this platform down below. You should only take a little bit of damage. And again, there's enemies throughout this area like reanimated skeletons. But you want to grab this pyromancy tome. And then from grabbing the tome, we're going to make our way forward and then to the left through this doorway. It looks like a dead end, but this is actually an illusionary wall. Now make a right from the illusionary wall and you will head through a doorway. There's going to be a lot of enemies in here as well. 
You can try to run past them if you'd like, but I probably would just kill them to save you a bit of trouble. Make your way through this doorway. Again, you'll have some skeletons reanimate, but if you're quick, you can run down the stairs and they shouldn't follow you down here. Now you're going to see Anri again, which is one of the NPC quest lines that we've been doing throughout the guide. So as you can see, they didn't follow me. Just make sure you didn't get followed. Otherwise, you know, you could possibly uh, be in for a bad time. Now we just want to choose no and then go through all of her dialogue. So just speak to her until she repeats herself and then make our way back up that staircase we ran down. We're going to go left. We're going to go past the skeletons. And then this time from this exit that we're going in, we're going to go left. Now right here, you just want to run down the stairs as quick as possible and then jump to the left. If you're quick enough, you should avoid this giant boulder of fuckery that the skeleton just got hit by. Now there's actually a skeleton sorcerer that's controlling this um, skeleton ball. And he's just inside here. You'll find one that's wearing a wizard hat. I did get invaded, but kill the skeleton with the wizard hat. And it'll cause the skeleton ball to hit these iron bars down here. And then when it breaks, it's going to give you an undead bone shard. So right here, we'll pick that up. And then we can make our way back down the hall to the left. So from the bars go left, there is a lot of skeleton enemies in this next area. So just be, you know, kind of cautious around here, take your time with them. And if you come around to this right side, you want to avoid the pots like this one here. You can tell what they look like. I just kind of showed you avoid those pots because they cause those little hex things to come out and do damage to you. And it's all those little pots with the cloth on top. So you can see I activated one again, make your way to the back for another ring. So that's our 21st ring. After you grab that, carefully make your way back out of these pots. And then we're going to go right, head forward. There'll be two big enemies up ahead. There's also traps on the floor, so watch out. I kind of got lucky there because I completely forgot about them. And then right here is a trap as well, but you can trigger it and then use that to your advantage to kill those skeletons. Or you can just run straight past them. Make your way through this doorway. Watch out for the giant skeleton ball. And then inside this area to the left is going to be our next bonfire. So this is a good checkpoint at least. If you can make it here, then you know, you're know you pretty far through the catacombs at least. After that, from the bonfire, if you make your way over here, wait for the skeleton ball to come by. Then make your way left. You can stay on the sides if you need to. So if you're all the way on the side, make sure you're really touching the side. It's kind of got a big hit box. Then we're going to run down the stairs and then hang a right. Hug the wall here. There's going to be some rats, so just be careful. There's also some blobs that fall from the ceiling, so make sure they don't drop on you. Otherwise, they're going to stun you and do some damage. Keep running all the way to the back. There's going to be some wheel skeletons that they're pretty easy, but they're kind of just fucking annoying. And then in this corner over here is going to be some blobs on the roof. You can switch to magic to knock them down, or you can kind of just walk forward and have them drop and then roll away. So as you can see, I'm trying to trigger this one and then you can just attack them. Now, thankfully they're weak to fire. And since we have the fire gem on the sword, it absolutely just does the damage. And this will get us another ring. So that's our 22nd ring. After you grab this one, You'll head back to where the um, skeleton ball was. So again, we're just running down here. And we're running all the way back to that stairway where the skeleton ball was coming through and where the rats were. Watch out for the blobs again on your way back. Now this is the stairway the ball came down from. Just to give you a reference point, you can see the ball there. This time we're gonna run past to the left and there's an illusionary wall here that you can smack. And then you can come up here, avoid the enemies or kill them, and then run all the way to the very end of this hallway. Now this is gonna give us another ashes. So you'll go to the very back at the Grave Warden's ashes, and you can go down the stairs to the right. And again, I believe this one is also an illusionary wall. So yep, smack the wall. And then from the wall, we're gonna go to the right Watch out for the enemies here. And in this room, there's going to be a lot of skeletons that reanimate coming up. So you want to just wait before you rush ahead. But we're going to go right. 
And then before we um, just run past all of these skeletons, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of stay on the side here and trigger just one or two of them. So some of them do trigger right here. You just want to take them out because we're going to have to go speak to Henry again, and we don't want them to come up behind us and attack us. So from here where they died, make your way on the right. You really want to hug this right side of the wall. If you're too close to that bridge, it's going to trigger them all. You're going to find a pathway here. So as you can see, they didn't trigger. If they do trigger, you're better off probably just dying to be honest, and then running back from the bonfire. Now speak to Henry, go through all of her dialogue again. So again, just all the dialogue. And then once she's repeating, now we can run down. We'll make our way back down the path where we came from. And then this time we're still hugging the wall. So we're hugging it to the left side. And what you want to actually do that we're going to do kind of like a big brain strategy, you know, 500 IQ play. What you want to do is pull the lever to open this gate. You do need to be embered for this part. So you should get invaded roughly through this hallway, right? There's a certain trigger point. So what I did here was I came back and we just open up our options menu. We embered ourselves cause I wasn't embered. And then while we're embered, we're going to run back through here. And this is to where that iron bar gate was that we opened with the lever. We run back through here. You're going to see that we've been invaded. Now we're going to do something that's going to make our life a lot easier. So once you have him invading us, you'll see him down at the stairway there. You can see the red phantom. Once he fully spawns in and he's kind of aggroed, you can see him walking towards you. From right around there, I'd start running. I would just start hauling ass over this bridge. I'm talking about you better run. Now we're going to do what's called a pro gamer move. You're going to smack the rope as you see him coming around the corner. You don't want to do it too early. It does take a second for the rope to break, but if you time it just right, you're going to get a ring as well as a gesture. So two for one there. Okay. After we grab both of those from that phantom. And if you fail, you can always, you know, just reset it. But what we'll do is continue. We're going to open this door here. This is going to go to our next boss. Now this boss isn't really hard at all, to be completely honest with you. You just head straight in here. There's going to be a chalice on an altar and you just interact with it or a goblet as they call it. Now, right at the start of the fight, if you run straight to the middle, you can grab the pyromancy tome. If you miss that tome, it's not a big deal. I can show you where to get it afterwards, which I will in case for some reason you missed it. I do recommend just getting it because it's right there. Now you're probably wondering how we actually damage this boss. As you can see, he's all dripped out. He's got his crown, his gold bracelets. He's dripping. We got to de-dripify him. In order to do that, we're just going to keep attacking his bracelets. After they take enough damage, which they take reduced damage since it's very high level drip. But once they take enough damage, they're going to actually break off of him. And when you're de-dripified, you actually feel basically dead. And that's how you defeat this boss. So again, dodges attacks. He does pretty like they're predictable, man. Like if I predict it, my IQ is like six and a half. So you can use some special attacks on there. Just keep damaging it. You don't want to be too down, like far into that smoke shit. You want to make sure you're not in that stuff. That stuff bad for your health. Eventually, after you get rid of all his drip, he's going to drop. All right, so we're going to break the last one. And again, he does spawn skeletons throughout the fight, but you can kind of just use his arm to block them. Sometimes they can hit through it, but ultimately they're really easy and they'll die once he dies. Send him back to the graves from once he came and you will also get a trophy. And then it'll trigger a cutscene, and you will spawn back inside this room. Now, for some reason, if you didn't get the tome, I'm going to show you where you can get it. So light the bonfire from the bonfire facing the new doorway. If you come around the left here, avoiding those annoying ass pots, it should be around here at the back. Um, it's obviously not there because I picked it up. But if you just kind of look around here, you will find the tome. Again, I recommend just grabbing it in the boss fight. But nonetheless, grab that and then from the bonfire, we will proceed forward. 
Now going through the door here, we're going to come out to a new area. Going all the way up the stairs. And look at that. What a fucking sight. The only thing more beautiful than that is all of you watching this video. Welcome everyone to the Boreal Valley. You can light the bonfire here and then we will head back to the Firelink Shrine to burn our undead bone shard. This will make our heals a bit better on the flask. And we can also run over to the Handmaid. We're going to give her the Grave Warden's Ash that we picked up in the catacombs. We're absolutely slamming through this one, guys. Like, fuck me. Absolute bosses. Go over to the Blacksmith. And here we can actually reinforce our weapon again. Uh, this is sort of just a reminder, you know, reinforce your weapon, use your souls, make yourself stronger as we progress through the game. Next up, we're going to run all the way down this bridge here. And some fucking noob died here, you can see. It wasn't me, but like, I'm going to pick up his souls, obviously. And you're going to have to fight one of these fucking annoying pieces of shit again. You remember these fucking annoying cocksuckers? You know, these little motherfucker shit. But look, just because I'm bad doesn't mean you're bad, right? All you guys have to do is, again, try and hit their head. That's going to stagger them, and then you can do the big dick damage on them. Or you can get a visceral attack as well if you press up in R1. So we're going to keep trying to dodge him, do the damage, and once you kill him, you're going to get another ring. Oh, awesome. I invaded another world. The good thing is they don't respawn, so that's always nice. But then run forward, and we're going to already have a new bonfire to go to. Okay, so again, activate the bonfire. After you've done that, we're going to head to the Firelink Shrine. We have some quest cleanup that we need to do, or quest steps. And we're going to go to the left of the blacksmith, back over to Grey Rat. And he's going to have a new dialogue option for us. He's going to basically be able to send him for a pillage. So talk to him and send him to pillage. And then go ahead and talk to him and make sure he's just repeating the same dialogue. And then we're going to quit the game. And then reload the game. And as you can see, he's now gone. So if you did that correctly, you went through all his dialogue, he should be gone. Then we're going to go to the stairs that's directly behind us. Go up the stairs, then go left, and then up again. We're going to the very top of the Firelink Shrine, where Patches is at, at the very back. You'll see him taking a squat. Speak to him, and then go through his dialogue options. And again, as long as he's repeating himself, we can do the next step. We're going to quit the game yet again. We're going to reload the game. He kind of dodged out there for a second. But you can talk to him again. He'll probably be saying the same dialogue, but then you can head back to the Boreal Valley. Now in this area, the enemies are a bit intimidating. Um, you can run past them if you're really quick enough, but it can also fuck you as well. So just be really careful. But they are pretty brutal. So keep making your way up the stairs. I'm going to show you it's very possible if you, you know, hug the wall and keep running. Those will eventually kind of not aggro on you anymore. You have these annoying assholes as well with the magic lance or whatever the fuck you want to call it. And then keep going forward. And then avoid these guys as well. You want to keep moving because they're constantly throwing magic at you from that damn lance. As you can see, like, I'm only getting a second to heal. <laughs> Some fucking noob died. And then come over here to the staircase. Now to the left, you want to smack this illusionary wall when this asshole stops hitting me. And then it's going to cause this stairway to open up. And then you can go all the way down the stairs. Now, hopefully they kind of unaggro from you, but if they're still on you, which has happened to me as well, then just kill them really quick. You don't want to jump down because if they come down here with you and you're fighting this person as well, it's going to be a bit brutal. You can sneak up on them and get a visceral. Okay, I fucking lied. But you can sneak up on them and do the big dick damage. They actually got stuck behind a tree, and this is going to give us a spell that we need for the trophy. So make sure you kill them. And then after that, you can open up a shortcut right here at the gate. And this leads right back to the bonfire. From the bonfire again, we can go up the stairs. We're going to basically be following the same path. I'd just like to show you so you're not lost. So that's where we opened up the gate to the left there. We're going to again run past these enemies. 
go up the staircase, hug the wall to the left here. If you're quick again, they shouldn't follow you. You have these two magic dudes again. Just keep running. Whenever that's coming at you, you're just going to have to roll. That's all you can really do to dodge that one. And then keep running. Don't stop. You can see the magic's even coming from under the ground. This time we're going to go right. Now, again, you're going to have two more of those really quick enemies. So you want to just keep rolling past them. And then you're going to find a staircase to the left over here. And we're going to end up inside a church. Now, in this church, there's some statues to the left. You do not want to attack them. Don't even bother going towards them. You just want to light the bonfire. Now, to the right of the bonfire is going to be Anri again. So go ahead and speak to her and go through all of her dialogue options. That's going to give you our 25th ring and our 22nd gesture. Only four more to go already, guys. We're absolutely slaying it. Now, again, make sure you go through all the dialogue options so the quest progresses. Go forward to this crypt, and you're going to find a covenant item. So a proof of concord kept, which is one of the harder ones to farm. They're very luck-based. And again, like I said, there are some statues in the corner over there that you can see on the right side. Don't touch them. Don't even go near them. It can interfere with the quest, so we don't want to be, yeah, in that area whatsoever. So now we're going to go to the left of the bonfire down the staircase. And we can get some uh, another upgrade for our flask, an undead bone shard. And it's around the right here if you just hug the wall. Now, there are those invisible enemies that kind of pop out. They're not really hard, but they, you know, kind of just show the little, like, black smoke around their head. You just want to be aware that they are in the area. You can kill this guy really quick. Grab the three homeward bones because those always come in handy. And then we have the undead bone shard. Now, as a reference, I'm going to show you from the shrine again. Or from the bonfire from the bonfire go left and instead of going right where we got the undead bone shard we're going to now go left we're going to go down the stairs and then keep going down you're going to see these invisible enemies again so they just kind of shows their eyes and then come through this very dark room now you do want to spam roll in this area here um, i'm an idiot and i didn't so this guy just jumped on my head and had his way with me so to avoid that, just keep spam rolling and the iframes will save you from him. If you do get attacked, just try to get to a safe point. Take a drink of the flask. Now from here, you're going to go down the staircase. We're going to go all the way down the staircase. Keep going down into the water. And then we're going to head left. There's a spell that we can actually grab in this area. So we're going to go towards the spell. And as you can see here, we're just going to keep going over to this area where the island is. And you can kind of use the land to walk through it a bit faster. And then come around the right side here. You'll see an enemy that's dead, but he's got a spell on him. That's going to aggro a lot of those little spider weird looking things. And you just want to quickly run back to the land over here. And... Keep running. They shouldn't really be able to catch up to you. They're fairly slow. And right here, you're going to see an entranceway under the castle there. And then you're also going to see a doorway to the right. So we want to head over to that doorway to the right. So to save you the time, we're going to make ourselves go to that doorway up ahead. So once you make it in here, light the bonfire. You do not want to go down the staircase. Avoid that area. We're going to go back up the stairs we came down. And this time we're going to go under the doorway that leads under the castle. So run over here and then make your way under. There's going to be a lot of those hand type spider enemy things. And you can just kill them or run past them. They're pretty easy to kill, and they're decent souls if you want to level up. But come around here, and then at the very back, there's a staircase, and then to the left inside this doorway is more ashes for the handmaid. And after you grab the ashes, head up the staircase. You're going to be met with a familiar face. You can also drink the soup there if you need more health to the right. It's that perp skirt from up north. And go ahead and speak to him and go through all of his dialogue. Of course, he's asleep. 
He's going to give you a spell, which is useful for our uh, miracle trophy. After that, keep talking to him. Make sure you exhaust his dialogue. He's going to raise his glass to you. And then he's going to fall right back asleep. After you go through his dialogue, we'll make our way up the staircase. Go through this area here. Go up these stairs. And there is an archer up above, so just be aware of him. Um, I came inside this area over there and just kept rolling. There is a knight that's over here as well. So if you aggro him, just run behind something so you can fight him without the archer sniping you. And then you can come through this area to go upstairs. There's going to be another knight. You just want to take him out. And you can also use magic if you want to just keep blasting him from afar. After you kill him, there's still the archer. If you go up behind him, you can do a visceral and knock him off the ledge, and then you won't even have to worry about him. So as you can see, we just sort of Spartan kick him off the ledge. So keep making your way around the right side here, and then run all the way to the very end of the map, or this hallway. And then at the end to our left is going to be multiple chests. And we're gonna open one of them for a ring. So this first one here is our ring. That is our 26 ring, the Leo ring. And you can open these ones as well. Okay, and after you open those, make your way back around and you can jump back down the stairs from where you came. And then this time we're gonna to go to the left, outside, and there's gonna be a lot of enemies in this next area. So up the stairs, there's gonna be a dog. Well, there's actually like a shit ton of dogs. And there's also those invisible enemies that grab you. You need to be really careful. I'd just inch your way up the stairs and just take them out as slow as you can. If you have a shield, you can block their attacks, stagger them, and then hit them. But once you get to the very top, after you kill all of the enemies, there's going to be a lift. You can take that lift to the very top. And there's also a shortcut. Now, this shortcut takes us right back to the church. So once you're at the top, just open the gate. As you can see, I was playing too much Elden Ring because I'm just pressing triangle. And you'll see those two enemies from before, and that's the church over there in the distance. Make your way back down that shortcut that we unlocked, and then we're going to go up the staircase directly in front of it. We're going to head up the left over here. There's going to be a lot of those invisible enemies. So I just try and roll through if you can, or just take them out. Then you're going to make your way into this area here. Now up here is going to be more of those quick kind of fast attacking enemies. And there's the boss wall right there to go into the boss room. We don't want to go in there yet. We're going to open another shortcut. We're going to come around this staircase here. Watch out for these two invisible bastards. They pop out as you open the door. So they're on the right side there. So just watch out for them. And then open this door and then directly in front is back to the church. So that way you can get to the church very easily and you can run back to the boss very easily if you do die. We're going to grab two rings right here. You just want to kind of be quick. You want to roll down and land in here. This will be our 27th ring. And then while the enemies are right there, we'll run over this way and there's an illusionary wall. Smack it and then grab the 28th ring. And if you're quick, you can just avoid these guys completely. So just run away and keep rolling. Like, honestly, only noobs really die here. Nah, to be honest, pe people die here. It happens. So anyways, you can go back through this shortcut we unlocked that goes right back up to the boss wall or the boss fog. And if you're Ember, there's actually a phantom here you can summon to help you with the fight if you're struggling. Or you can always have a friend help you as well. Pontiff is a really cool fight, but at times he can be a bit challenging for some people. Obviously not me, just kidding. I fucking hate Pontiff. I get my shit kicked in all the time. Now, a good thing you can do with your friend or with the Phantom is just juggle the aggro. So when he's aggroed onto the Phantom, try to damage him a lot. He does the same sort of attacks, but occasionally he summons this Phantom. And if you're quick, you can really put in some damage on the Phantom to get rid of him. And then that way you're only ever fighting the real version of him. And then it's less, you know, kind of aggro that you have to juggle between the Phantom. So always try and kill the copy that Pontiff spawns um, as quick as you can, just to make life a little bit easier. Now, with the Phantom, it is much easier of a fight, but eventually you'll get there in the end and you will kill him. 
Now, once he's defeated, you'll get a trophy and you can also light the bonfire. So there you go, a nice easy boss down. Just kidding, like I said, I get my shit kicked in so I thought I'd leave some extra tips for you. So if this is you getting whaled on, I'm gonna show you where you can farm to basically get a bit more souls. From the distant manor bonfire, if you run under the castle where we find those spider dudes, you can actually farm them for souls. Now, a little fun fact about me, uh, I met my wife and we bonded through playing um, Dark Souls 3. So we're one of those, you know, like meet online kind of couples. And basically, she always knows that I fucking hate Pontiff. Like, I just suck ass at the fight. I don't know why. I'm trash, guys. Make fun of me in the comments. It is what it is. But yeah, the game's very special to us. And I still get ripped on for being ass at Pontiff. And as you can see, I needed a phantom to help me. So look, at the end of the day, we're going to get our trophies one way or another. And yeah, that's just a fun fact about me and, and how I met my wife and why this game means a lot to me. So if you need to, farm as many souls as you can to get stronger. And then after you do defeat him, which you will because you guys are beast, we're going to use the rest of our souls to just level up. And then we're going to end it here in the Firelink Shrine, guys. So defeat Pontiff, and I will see you in the next one in the Firelink Shrine. Now, if you are still following the guide, why don't you leave a comment below that says, Bro, you suck at Pontiff. Mm -hmm.